Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're talking about rigid tools. That's right, we're gonna talk about this rigid tool impact wrench right here. Uh, this is on their 18 volt platform. It is a brushless half inch drive mid torque impact wrench. And we're gonna go over it. This will top to bottom, see how it stands up against other tools we've tested so far. So you do not wanna miss this. And if you're, you know, following the channel for a while, you know we do not have a lot of rigid tools on the channel. There's a good reason for that. You know, a long time ago, we just had pretty bad experience with rigid and we said, we're just not buying any more rigid stuff. Uh, with that being said, we just didn't buy a lot of uh, rigid stuff except for the miter saw stand for 99 bucks. That's just a good stand, right? So uh, anyways, with that being said, we did purchase this with our own monies and we'll talk about that in a second. So you don't want to miss this, stick with us. All right, so like we mentioned earlier, this right here is the half inch square drive mid torque brushless impact wrench on their 18 volt platform, model number uh, R86012. If it ends with the K, it means you bought it as a kit. This impact wrench, battery, charger, uh, all that stuff was around $77 and that's primarily the only reason we have it. Uh, you could pretty much buy uh, this kit and another tools and stuff like that for a really good deal. And we posted a video a couple days or weeks ago actually, depending on when this video goes out, um, on how to do that. So if you missed it, then I don't know what to say, just go check out the community post. So uh, that's the reason we have this and we did purchase their monies and we said, hey, you know, you know, for seven, seven bucks, not a bad deal. So let's just at least check it out, see if it's, you know, good way to get back into the rigid ecosystem. So by the end of this video, we'll figure that out. Anyways, the point is, um, this rid, uh, impact wrench may look familiar, mainly because, you know, there's other tools like that, uh, <laughs> that probably on the market that look almost exactly like this, except just different color. So uh, we're not gonna talk too far into words that kind of numbers and stuff like that speak for itself, but let's get into marketing height and then we'll bring you in closer and take a better look at it. All right, so this right here is an 18 volt brushless cordless four mode half inch mid torque impact wrench with the friction ring. Uh, it is brushless, which gives you maximum performance and longer runtime, just as the rigid 18 volt brushless tools do. It is in their 18 volt cordless system. It is built for a lifetime to withstand the toughest job site conditions and backed by the industry's best service agreement, keeping you covered for life. That's right. This tool comes with a LSA, which is lifetime service agreement, uh, free parts, free service for life. But in order to do that, you need to register it. Okay. Uh, the brushless motor technology that you get uh, with this thing, uh, with this tool, uh, in gives you increased motor efficiency to deliver maximum performance for longer and extended motor life. Okay. Uh, this tool has 650 foot pounds of breakaway torque and about 500 foot pounds of tightening torque. It is versatile by being 10% more compact. It has three speed modes and an auto tightening mode. Uh, this model has a friction ring. You can buy accessories for this impact wrench like the protective boot. If you wanted to buy that one, the, the uh, model number on that is the AC13B01N. Yeah, talk about that, right? Um, if you pair it with the rigid max output batteries, it'll give you maximum power and maximum runtime. It is allegedly 100% compatible with all rigid 18 volt tools. All right, so let's talk about this tool and we'll go over some of this stuff real fast, right? So the big thing that's covered here is this is obviously left-hand part of the tool. All this, uh, uh, gray stuff here is rubber overmolded. Uh, this part right here with the logo is rubber overmolded. This part here is obviously metal and this part here is metal and the back part here is also metal. We'll talk about that in a second, all right? The other thing you'll notice if you look at this belt clip is this is one of the few companies, if not the only company that you know we generally use right now or that we have in our arsenal, uh, where the belt clip is kind of matched to the color scheme of the tool. Uh, most everybody knows uh, most belt clips are just like shiny chrome color and doesn't really match the tool, but they actually took time to get this to match this color. Okay, so that's a nice touch there. I'm not gonna say it feels exactly like a rigid tool, but it does feel, you know, generally pretty nice as a power tool would feel. Uh, we don't have too many rigid tools as we mentioned already, all right? So, other than that, I'm just gonna say brushless down here, and I'll say brushless here, just in case you didn't know your tool was brushless. And the other thing is, it's got a variable speed trigger here that generally seems to work pretty well, and four reverse switch here, and the light is here. Uh, it only has one LED light here, just nothing up here, you know, as some tools would have. But other than that, that's what's going on with what you see right here. This belt clip is reversible to the back si uh, other side here if you did wanna do that. And on the back side here, there is a port where you could p potentially face some type of fall rest type system here. But most of the people I've seen uh, uh, with the fall rest type system connected to a tool usually have it connected to the belt hook, all right? So there is that. 
All right, uh, moving around to the back here, you see the uh, modes selector switch. So this has 30 modes, one, two, three, low, medium, high, think of it that way, and auto mode. Auto mode will uh, stop impacting as soon as it really starts impacting in forward and in reverse, it'll stop, in, it'll stop pretty much cut all the power altogether um, as soon as it feels like it stopped impacting. So that way, if you, you know, using it on full speed or full trigger pull, let's just say it doesn't have something going flying across the room and it generally seems to work decently well as much other, most other, uh, tools do okay and here you know, it's obviously drawing air out through here so you know uh, that's the fan component in there on this hand there's pretty much nothing uh, that's you know outstanding as the other side would uh, it's got the same uh, rubberized molding stuff here to help prevent it from slipping and it'll tell you to not touch this because it's going to be hot and I will tell you right now this stuff definitely gets hot as you're using it all right that's no secret all right so moving on to the front here uh, this here obviously is the half inch anvil with the friction ring and let's talk about the variable speed so let's go to mode one variable speed here check this out Mode two. Mode three. And auto mode. So it's not exactly mode two. Um, auto mode, right? So here's mode two. But it's really close. Mode auto and mode two, it's, or auto is, seems like it's somewhere between mode two and three, but you know, take that. Um, since we don't have too many rigid tools, let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom here. So on the bottom here, it doesn't have any like metal inserts or even gel inserts to you know help uh, absorb some of the impact or reduce the vibrations or stiffen it up. It just seems to work pretty well like this, but you know it's covered by a lifetime warranty, so there is that. All right. Uh, moving on to the battery here, uh, we're going to talk about this because you know we don't talk about too many rigid tools. Uh, this is CS2222. Did I say that too many times? Four twos, let's just say. Uh, four amp hour max output battery on an 18 volt platform. And this actually has an interesting uh, setup and I'm, I'm sure most people who use Rigid are gonna know this. It's got the two that you have to press on each side and each one technically unlocks a part of uh, the battery slide mechanism. So, uh, you know, I guess in case one of these was broken, you know, you'd kind of be screwed, I guess, because, you know, you wouldn't really be able to recess this down. But I guess it's technically more safe instead of, you know, just pressing one and the whole thing coming off, right? Uh, but you know, there's that. Uh, uh, this side here obviously has battery fuel gauge, four bars. Other than that, you know, uh, for a uh, kitted value of, you know, 77 ish dollars, that seems like a pretty good deal. So what most people are going to want to know is how is the performance? Well, let's find out. All right, so some of those numbers went by quick. So let's go take a look. And all right, remember, we're only gonna talk about the averages to keep this uh, going quick, especially since if you've been watching the channel, you know all the tests are done exactly the same, using the same sockets and all that kind of stuff, all right? So uh, this is the half inch drive, so we didn't need to use too many adapters, but you do need, we did need to use the adapter for the uh, eight inch timber lock bin because that hex head is just too small, all right? So uh, keep that in mind. Let's go quick, all right? Um, 
So this uh, impact wrench and the 4 amp hour battery combo on the uh, medi or light duty test, 8 inch timber lock test, had an average of 3.6. And on the medium duty test, 5 6 inch by 6 inch lag had a score of 3.09 across 3 runs. And the heavy duty test, half inch by 8 inch lag across 3 runs, the average comes out to 13.24, all right? So this thing right here, the battery and tool combination comes in weighing and whopping 5.29 pounds, all right? That's right around 2.4 kilos. Uh, going into just some of the specs and stuff here, uh, this tool has an RPM of 2,800 and an IPM of 3,800, which, you know, seems like a lot of uh, IPMs there. And as we mentioned already, is right around 500 foot-pounds of tightening torque, all right? So uh, let's talk about total performance number. How do we get that? It's the sum of the averages. So if you take the sum of the averages, the number comes out to 19.94, and that puts this impact wrench right around 10th place, right behind the Makita GWT-07 with a 2.5 amp hour battery, and right in front of the GWT-07 with the 8 amp hour battery. So since we're only talking about the GWT-07 there, let's talk about you know one tool ahead and one tool behind, right? So it also puts it right behind the Milwaukee uh, mid-torque impact wrench 2962 Gen 2 using a six amp hour battery. That one had about 18.84 and right uh, in front of the Metabo HPT WR36DE, which is the multi-volt version of the half inch uh, mid-torque impact wrench, which had a score of, you know, uh, 20.35, all right? So it's right in there uh, between those tools, all right? so. Uh, let's go take a look at just some of those numbers here real quick, all right? Uh, the light duty test, the 8-inch timber lock test, you know, had about 3.6. Uh, it seems to be, you know, the 2 to 3 seconds on average is pretty much how, how quickly these impact wrenches can drive that uh, timber lock in. Not too bad. On the mid-torque, 5 seconds by extension, it had a score of 3.09. Uh, which is pretty similar to where it kind of is, right, with the 3.55 and 4.03, but most of the mid-torque impact wrenches seem to be right around three to four seconds on average. And uh, on the heavy-duty test, you know, where these impact wrenches really start coming to work, it had an average of around 13.24, okay? Uh, there's another toy that had an average of around 13.51. That's the Bosch Pro Factor uh, GDS 18740N using a 4-amp-hour battery. It had 13.51. You know, that's a little bit further down. But uh, the GWT-07 right around had around 12.13. And uh, with the 8-amp-hour battery, it had 12.35, right? So it seems to be uh, just a hair slower than that and that's probably why it landed where it did. So what can we say about this tool? And I'll tell you, uh, one of the first things I immediately thought when I pulled this trigger was, it feels very similar to uh, a, a Milwaukee impact wrench, all right? Um, and that was made really apparent uh, when we actually started using it on stuff. I don't know if it's mainly because the ratio of RPMs to IPMs that it has, but for some reason, when you pull this trigger and it starts impacting, your your thoughts are getting back to this feels like a you know milwaukee impact wrench okay um and there is some probably some truth of that uh with the tti whatever owning you know milwaukee and, and uh rigid and all that stuff or making it for that not to say that they own it but you know it's kind of made generally around with the same uh r d resources or whatnot so i'm just going to say that uh also if you have the gen one you could probably take it out and put it right here and i don't have the gen one and you're going to look at it and say there seems to be, you know, some heritage there. They, they seem to share some type of characteristics. That's not to say they're made exactly the same or, in this, or you know, exactly the same way with the exact same components and that stuff. It just means that it feels and looks something similar, right? And I'm literally just telling you that because I had to go look that up and I wasn't really sure if the uh, Rigid had uh, relations to uh, Milwaukee in terms of like all of these impact wrench and stuff being made. But it seems like that's uh, what seems to be uh, most people's or have accepted, let's just say, all right? So anyways, the point is, um, they seem to put been put together a good impact wrench, you know, uh, it seems to work really well. One thing I did note is that it got really hot right here, much hotter than I remember like other tools that we've used. Um, and some of the tools may have some kind of guard like that here. Um, not as much on the mid-torque ones, but some of them may be like rubber over molded or something like that. Like for instance, on the Hitachi or Metabo HBT one, um, and maybe even the Makita one, there's like a like rubberized thing here. So maybe that's it, maybe it's not, who knows, right? So the point is, uh, it seems to work really well and it seems to impact really well and you got a really good feeling, you know, feels in fact like a Milwaukee one when you're using it, right? So uh, would I go out and buy this tool again? That depends. If I was gonna get this tool and the kit uh, 
for the same price for let's just say around 77 ish dollars or with other tools and stuff like that involved as a combo whatever then yeah i'll probably buy that again would i go out and pay full retail price for this i don't know that's going to be a hard sell mainly because uh for full retail price a tool only is right around uh, 200 bucks and if you buy a one battery and charger kit right now it's 250 bucks right so for that price uh for full retail price or normal price i would not buy it again mainly because you could pretty much get a uh you can get pretty much almost any any other uh, manufacturer's tool, mid torque impact wrench in that uh, that price range or near that price range for the same price. And uh, my biggest thing right now is that I personally just don't have a lot of rigid tools. Okay, that's not to say rigid makes bad tools. Who knows? I just had a bad experience with them, and I haven't purchased too many. I haven't been too much far into the ecosystem. But if this is a any you know. Uh, defining factor they probably you know seem to make better tools now right so anyways the point is uh you know as i tell you in every video just go buy whichever tool works for you in the price range that you need that you can get good work done right you don't need the fastest most expensive most cheapest whatever tool just do whatever works right so hope this video helped you guys out and uh maybe we'll see some original on this channel who knows otherwise have a great day get back to work and i'll see you guys next time